everybody who is watching, uh, this is Will McNeil, the creative director of of The Mill, which is a company involved in a fascinating project uh, investigating the the impact of art on the human brain. Uh, I'm going to leave it there, but I, I maybe you can fill fill in here on on what the project is and and the mill's role in it. Sure, sure. First of all, I'm one of several creative directors. Uh, definitely not the creative director, but I focus on projects that are more um, technology based and interactive. So this is um, one of those uh, sort of key ones where we're taking kind of our our typical skill set, which is kind of crafting pretty imagery, but matching that with uh, some really interesting technology to, um, to help tell this story. Um, so so we, were, um, we were working alongside Art Fund and uh, Pablo, an agency who are our client on this. We were asked to figure out how to create a visualization of brainwaves for people as they look at art. And um, that needed to happen in a lot of different scenarios, um, not just in a, in a lab with a complex gear attached to people, but actually in a way that they could move around a gallery space um, feel unencumbered and just, you know, get on with looking at art. So um, the process was a, a mixture of, of technology, figuring out kind of what kind of hardware we'd need to get, what sort of uh, headset we would need to buy, mm -hmm. how we would tap into that, and then build an application that, that took the information that was coming off that EEG headset and turned that into 3D visualizations that people could see in real time, live. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, what did you, so what did you come up with? <laughs> so um, the system uses a kind of, I guess, would you call an over-the-counter EEG headset? It's mm -hmm. um, it's called a Muse, and it's typically used for sort of um, assisting people with meditation, kind of helping them see when they've moved into the right kind of concentration state for meditation. Um, in this case, though, we kind of bypassed a lot of that, and we just went straight for the, the raw EEG data that's coming off this headset. Mm -hmm. And... Um, so that's basically, in this case, there, there are four little sensors that stick uh, on your brain, uh, not on your brain, on your forehead, and they um, they read live EEG data, which in itself isn't particularly uh, meaningful. It just comes in as a, a stream of numbers, and if, they're, if those numbers are coming in, you know that uh, someone's got an active brain, mm -hmm. but then... Um, you know, through our own research and analysis, we started to learn a little bit about neuroscience and what you'd have to do to, to actually pull something meaningful from this. So the, the first step is to, is to take those numbers and, and process them in a way that um, instead of just seeing a bunch of raw data, what you're getting is the brainwave spectrum, which is mm -hmm. a bunch of different um, frequencies, if, we, if you will. So if you're thinking maybe like uh, you know, dance music, we, we break off the bass and the high notes and the midtones, and we treat each of those separately. This is kind of a similar approach, but we're doing it with the whole spectrum of brainwave activity. Okay, and just to fill in some of the detail here, so participants were asked to move around the gallery space, weren't they, with different famous pictures yes. uh, by Manet, Manet, Monet, yeah, the works. yeah, um, and uh, and so you were measuring their their brainwaves or what was going on in their brains as they were looking at these pictures. Yeah, so we yeah. were we were uh, people were allowed to walk around the gallery. They looked at art while they were wearing one of these headsets. That feeds a signal into our computers that then um, through an application that we wrote, turns that into 3D animation, um, which you then can watch. And that 3D animation is um, is designed to be meaningful, to, to kind of help you understand some of the things that are going on in your brain at the time that you're looking at art. And what did they, what did you find? Well, I think some of the most interesting things are um, when we first started to test this system was that um, people's reactions were very different. Different people responded in very different ways. Um, because the process, the project eventually had to make its way into kind of into the wild and be, uh, you know, work for a big range of people, we had to kind of flatten some of that data down and make it a little more consistent across it. But what we did discover is um, a couple of things. We, in our experiments, came across these uh, brainwave patterns that represent things like when you're trying to problem solve or when you're doing kind of difficult kind of thinking, when you're basically when you're thinking hard. And mm -hmm. That tends to be associated with people uh, when they're looking at art, if they're looking at um, uh, abstract art. And the thing that you see happen most often is, is people trying to make sense of what they're seeing. And through some of the research we did, we found that people almost unconsciously, the first time they look at an abstract piece of art, go, what is it? And they mm -hmm. try, to, try to figure out what it is. And then slowly they kind of give up on that. And then they just start to experience the art um, for, you know, for what they see and what they feel. So we built a thing into our system that represented that moment where 
people were trying to problem solve, trying to figure out what they were looking at. Um, and uh, and when the art was kind of um, triggering them to to think, uh, you know, think through complex thoughts. Mm -hmm. So um, we built that into our system when we recognized that pattern as a kind of corkscrewing effect within our um, 3D animation. So normally you just have sort of waves going up and down. We turn that into a kind of swirling pattern that breaks here and there. So there's kind of meaning between the um, the 3D animation and what's going on in your mind. Mm -hmm. Another one was um, recognition. So uh, another kind of um, sort of accepted brainwave pattern that we were uh, looking for is when you see a face or an animal that you recognize. Um, mm -hmm. So we built that in and that we represent that as a kind of glowing uh, glowing color that moves throughout the lines throughout our, our, our animation. Okay. Okay. And so, well, and this happened when people were looking at paintings that they'd seen before, for example. Or... It did happen then. Yes. So when, uh, for instance, we did our um, experiment uh, the other day in the Courtauld Gallery at the Somerset House um, in London, which is full of really uh, well-known impressionist art, um, Monet's, Manet's, uh, Van Gogh. Um, yeah, that was happening constantly. Um, we were seeing that kind of warm glow moving throughout our our art. Uh, throughout our animation. And then next door, we had the um, the modern gallery with um, almost entirely abstract art. And we were seeing a lot more of the the other effect, the sort of corkscrewing effect. I see. And are, are either of these effects associated with particular moods? For example, is the is the recognition associated with calming or do increased dopamine or, or something like that? I mean, they are. Our system wasn't prepared, uh, wasn't set up to test that. Um, mm -hmm. For that, you need uh, either more advanced EEG headsets or or an MRI. Um, mm -hmm. But that is basically the the accepted um, science is that when you see something that you find beautiful, there's a dopamine rush. So there's a, a bit of kind of you know I I feel something good inside. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 That's interesting. So, okay. So you've done this with art. Are there plans to branch out and test it out with other art forms, say music or, or literature? Or... Yeah. I mean, these basically a lot of these things exist in kind of laboratory already and have been done over the last 10 years with various types of, of measurement tools. Um, we actually did one years ago for the um, uh, cosmetics company Lush um, to measure how someone was feeling when they were having a massage. Um, oh yeah, he, um, and we found you know increased um, brainwave activity basically when when you see things shifting from um, different brainwave spectrums to rep represent when someone's feeling more relaxed. So we start to see that. Um, mm. I think you know it, personally, I mean for me the the art form that has the most instant kind of brain or emotion changing reaction that for me is uh, definitely music, and mm -hmm. I think. Um, you know, I'm I'm almost I'm so sensitive to it. I'm almost conscious of what music I listen to at different times of day and and when I'm working. So I can I can imagine that would actually have a very profound um, effect on something like this. Mm, yes, and you were saying that the responses were very individual, which suggests that perhaps if if that the the mood responses would be very individual as well. And I would depend on I guess to what extent you recognize the the piece of art or the piece of music you were. I mean, I think we would we would we would set up our system slightly differently to to find these patterns that I would associate more with music. These were very um, sort of visual um, patterns that we, through our own experiments and through research online, that we found. Um, so basically, these were particular identifiers within a brainwave pattern that we were looking for that were associated with testing that had been done around looking at imagery, looking at art. I think we would look for different ones with music. Okay. Um, yeah. What would yeah. you look for in music? Or, <laughs> do you have an idea? I guess, yeah, I mean, I, I guess you'd probably have to set it up a little bit differently because it would be much more about emotional response. Um, and um, I also would imagine I would be looking at other things besides just literally the brain and, and look at things like um, pulse and skin response and that stuff as well, to see what's mm. happening with, you know, what kind of reaction people are having. Okay, so taking some of this research, do you think there are the therapeutic implications absolutely and yeah. there's science out there there's definitely um this uh testing being done with using art therapy um and brainwave and other kind of body uh metrics are being used to determine whether it's effective or not um but art and music therapy as i'm sure you know or that's already i mean that is already that's very through. widespread and i yeah. wonder if there's some way of of fine-tuning it based absolutely. On things yeah yeah absolutely and i think you can um you can back up your claims when you have kind of actual data to um you know measured uh, clinical data to, um, you know, to support those ideas.
Mm, I mean, it's interesting that you found that the familiarity that somebody has with a piece of art makes a big difference in, in their in their reaction to it, because I guess there's been a lot of uh, use of music in a more generic way. You know, you think this is this is a generically calming piece of music. So this will make people feel calm when they listen to it. But mm. it, your findings suggest that actually that's not necessarily the case. Well, I think what we found is that um, you know we had some people who were doing our tests who are art critics who knew every piece in the gallery intimately and would have a very different response from someone who uh, who didn't know them or maybe had only seen them once or twice in a book and seeing them for the first time in person. Um, you know, the the responses were quite different. The um, the amount of balance between kind of recognition and kind of and hard thinking um, problem solving, you know really peer, peaked up then when you the difference between someone who had seen the art many times and someone who was seeing it for the first time mm. which suggests that possibly I mean just going getting ahead here that if you are working in a therapeutic way with art it, it's very important to take the person's preferences into consideration before you start introducing artwork or exposing them to certain pieces yeah absolutely I think um, particularly when it comes to modern art right you've got to um, I mean some people are instantly kind of put off by its sort of opaqueness by how difficult it is to understand what you're looking at um, mm. some people uh, I guess it's exactly the same as music right some people love you know um, romantic classical music but are, or baroque but are completely put off by modern classical music um, mm. yeah I think you definitely have to take in take that into account yeah, because you do get in, you know, these Spotify Spotify playlists, calm music and <laughs> happy uh, music, music for a rainy day, whatever. Yeah, some people's calm music is other people's um, sort of uh, nail biting horror. <laughs> so, yeah, so maybe it throws some of that into into doubt. <laughs> yeah, indeed, indeed. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Will, for, for sharing some of this with me. It will be really interesting to follow your project and see where it goes and see how you how you branch out. Um, thank, thank you very much. So I'll follow with, with a lot of interest. So thank you so much. Hi, everyone. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more of the same, then feel free to hit subscribe on our channel. Or for more similar coverage, visit our website at www.thecuspmagazine.com. Thanks, and I'll see you another time.